Hello Saints and as many future Saints as possible. Today's video is part 7 of an 8 part series called Hidden Truth. So we're almost done. We've got one more video to go. Now, keeping in mind that the failure to take advantage of all the tools we've discussed in the previous 6 studies is exactly what leads to confusion, misunderstanding, and sadly much of the contention within the body of Christ today. The enemy's favorite weapon is counterfeiting God's programs to confuse God's children. You see the enemy wants to be like God. We see the enemy's intentions clearly by looking at Isaiah chapter 14 verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds I will be like the Most High. So he tries to counterfeit everything that God does. All the things, including the performing of miracles, healings, deliverance, etc. And also by having an unholy trinity. Now, I mentioned earlier that once we're born, we never die. Life is eternal. And we as individuals must decide here on earth where we're going to spend the rest of eternity. So we have two choices, either with God or without God and with Satan. Once we die a physical death, it's too late. We can no longer make that decision and we're sealed forever into our decision for eternity. Now, with or without God, God has done everything that he can possibly do to save us from the fate of living without him. But we as individuals must make a decision here on earth and accept the gift before we die. The prescription for our salvation is found in Paul's gospel for today. It's nicely packaged in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. And we read, Moreover, brethren, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now the simple gospel, to acknowledge our sinful state which separates us from God forever, to believe that God provided the perfect solution in the sacrifice of his son, his burial, his resurrection back to life, covering our sins, uh, our sin nature with the righteousness of his son Christ Jesus, remembering our sins no more. It's this belief and trust that saves us with absolutely no works involved. At the very moment of salvation, we're baptized into Christ and the Holy Spirit enters us. The Holy Spirit seals us in salvation. It's our proof that we're members of the body of Christ. This baptism of the Holy Spirit is our identity with Christ. Paul speaks of this baptism in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and <clears throat> in you all. There's nothing else required to get saved or to stay saved. In fact, if you believe you have to do something extra to get or stay saved, then it's likely you're not saved at all. Because salvation is all of Christ and none of us. He does all the saving and he does all the keeping. We have nothing to do with it outside of belief and trust. There are thousands of ministries out there today that tell us we must commit to Christ to be saved. This is untrue, friends. It's His commitment to us that saves us, not our commitment to Him. These false ministries trick you 
into focusing on Jesus' earthly ministry and not the heavenly ministry revealed to Paul and to the body of Christ. The mystery program kept uh, from God, kept secret from God to himself until the Jews rejected his son as their Messiah. Now, if you pay attention, you'll notice that all denominations, radio and television ministries, they try to focus your attention back to the wrong program, Israel's program, the program that promotes a works-based salvation. They bolster our pride nature and keep us from keep us begging for forgiveness. It, it's control, folks. That's what religions do. They control you by placing you back under the law. Bondage is the right word here. Now, think these things through very well. Before you commit to these types of ministries, they'll redirect your focus from Paul's heavenly program and steer you back to the earthly program, faith plus works salvation, created for the nation of Israel <clears throat> under a completely different dispensation. It's our faith of Christ that saves us. Our belief and trust of his actions done on our behalf. It's not our faith in Christ that saves us. There are many false religions out in the world today that believe Christ Jesus is real and walk the earth. But their, their mistake is not believing the actions of what Christ Jesus did. You see, that keeps them lost and unsaved. All our sins were forgiven and paid for at the cross. Jesus said, just before he gave up the ghost, it is finished, done, complete, period. The payment was made for all sin, past, present, and future. And by the way, how many of your sins were yet future while Jesus was on that cross? All of them. You weren't even born, yet all your sins were paid for in full 2,000 years ago. All we have to do is simply believe, trust, and thank Him for what He did that day. Friends, there's many of you listening here today that continuously ask for forgiveness over and over and over again. I was one of them before I learned how to rightly divide. But the truth is, there is no more forgiveness to give you. It was done in full 2,000 years ago. Not rightly dividing God's word leads to false teaching. And here's one, for example, the teaching that says all you have to do is confess your sins and then you'll be forgiven. And if that's what you're thinking right now, I'm sorry, but you do not understand the gospel of grace at all. The question today is not the sin question, but the son question. What will you do with the son? Will you accept the payment he's made on your behalf once and for all? Will you accept Paul's gospel of grace? Or will you refuse and reject what Jesus and he alone could do and did on your behalf as preached by our Apostle Paul? So I leave you with that question. And next video will be the eighth one, our last video in this series. I look forward to taking part with that, uh, with that video with you. And thanks for studying with me, folks. I'll see you on the next video, part eight of Hidden Truth.